Good day everyone. Greetings. This is Pastor Itani Madima, Kingdom Restoration Church, Toyando. Today I want to address the issue of planting seeds on fertile ground. Jesus used a parable to explain seed sowing and harvest, and this parable has been hijacked to talk about money. This is one of the reasons why some congregants leave their original congregations to join mega churches which looks more prosperous. This era of preaching portrays such churches as fertile ground where their seed will produce better harvest. While the doctrine of sowing seeds and harvesting has its place in the kingdom, we should not tolerate the misinterpretation of scripture to achieve our desired results. Have you ever heard people say, plant your seed in our ministry, this is fertile ground. Sow your seed to our man of God, he is anointed, he is fertile ground. So what exactly is fertile ground? For years we have had wrong interpretations of the parable of the sower, where the seed is compared to money and the fertile ground being the anointed man of God. The thorny bushes and shallow ground being poor people and those who are not anointed. Let us read our main text from Matthew 13 verse 1. The same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. And as he was scattering the seed, some fell among the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places, where it didn't have much soil. It sprang up quickly, because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked up the plants. Still other seeds fell on good soil, where it produced a crop and a hundred, sixty times more than what was sown. Verse 18. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their hearts. This is the seed sown along the path. Verse 20, the seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once received it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refer to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on soil refers to someone who hears the word and understand it. Then is the one who produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, thirty times what was sown. Jesus knew that this parable was going to be distorted two thousand years later. That's where we are today. So he gave the interpretation of the parable to stop people from misinterpreting and guessing the meaning of the parable. But regardless of the fact that he explained the meaning of the parable, people find ways to twist the meaning. It is very clear on Jesus' interpretation that the seed in the parable was not money. The sowing ground was not the church or ministry where the money is given. The seed referred to in this message is the gospel, and the soil is the condition, the attitude, the attention of the one who is receiving the message. Jesus made explanation plain and simple, leaving no room for speculation or guessing, because he gave us the meaning. In the 80s and 90s, they built a whole doctrine on hundredfold return of offering money based on this parable. But Jesus made it clear here that after the message falls on the ears of someone ready to receive it, it produces in him a hundredfold return of bearing fruits of righteousness and of faith because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. This is exactly what happens during our Sunday service. Different people receive the word with gladness on Sunday. 
They stand up and spin around and give high five to five people around them when a powerful sermon is being delivered. But immediately after the sermon, some of them cannot remember what the preacher was talking about. Some manage to carry the sermon in their hearts and they manage to leave the church building with it until someone cuts them off in traffic on the way home. They lose their temper and start screaming and shouting and sometimes get involved in a fight. By the time they arrive home, it's as if they were not even in church. Some remember the whole sermon and they take it all the way to their place of work or their schools during the week until they are confronted by a situation which makes them doubt what they have had in church on Sunday. And finally, there is a seed that falls on good ears. Someone who understands the message and it produces good results, up to a hundredfold return. I don't know how many times during the offering did we hear of sevenfold, sixtyfold, a hundredfold return of their money based on this scripture. The offering basket is not a casino machine. It's not a lottery. How many people go to church or a conference hoping to hit a jackpot through the offering basket because of this kind of preaching? It shifts people from a genuine miracle to magic, from a blessing to luck. It is really amazing how people are able to twist something that was explained so clearly. How did people end up bringing money into this? How many times do we hear people talk about seed and fertile soil during offerings, using this scripture to tell people to sow into their fertile ministry because of the anointing in their ministry, because of the prosperous nature of their ministries? It is because of this wrong interpretation that Christians have become stingy to poor ministries and poor pastors and poor people in general. They are not considered fertile ground. We have seen some believers neglecting their local pastors and sending their so-called seed offering to prosperous ministries and mega ministries because they are supposed to be fertile ground. We cannot blame church members for running from one conference to another if we taught them fertile ground this way. We have ourselves to blame for giving them the wrong impression. This is one of the reasons why some ministers of the gospel will try everything to gather all material possessions that will decorate their image so that they may look prosperous and be considered fertile soil. Let's correct this once and for all. Fertile soil is not that preacher who drives the biggest car and wears the most expensive suits. This scripture was not referring to sowing seeds of money at all. Fertile soil is not that mega church that you see on television. This is the reason why many Pentecostals and charismatic churches don't have any programs to cater for the poor. The Muslims beat us by far on this. They take care of poor communities while we preach fertile ground to divert people from the poor. Yes, some believers are stingy towards the poor. They often quote words that Jesus said when his feet were being anointed. He said, the poor you will have with you always. He said this because he was going to depart from this world. So he was saying you will remain with the poor and you will have more opportunities to take care of the needs of the poor when I'm gone. He was not saying they should neglect the poor. Let us read from Psalms chapter 41 verse 1. Blessed is the one who considers the poor. In the day of trouble, the Lord delivers him. Proverbs chapter 19 verse 17. Whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord and he will repay him for his good deed. And here is the scary one. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 16. Whoever oppresses the poor to increase his own wealth or give to the rich will only come to poverty. How did we end up reversing this? We are given the impression that giving to the rich brings a blessing. But this scripture says the opposite. Let me read it again. Whoever oppresses the poor to increase his own wealth or gives to the rich will only come to poverty. Wow, this is serious. This is exactly what we have been made to believe, that if you give to a prosperous minister, your offering will yield a higher percentage. We are more attracted to glamorous preachers, 
we are attracted to preachers that have a higher net worth. We think if we give to their ministry, we will attract the same kind of riches they have. Some of you have come into the conclusion that God's blessings is not real because you have neglected the poor. You have given so much to the rich and you have not seen any results. So now you are beginning to question the whole concept of God's blessings. As you have heard from the scripture above, neglecting the poor can make you poorer. We don't have much emphasis on giving to the poor anymore. Some of us have neglected suffering pastors in our area and in our region. We have sent our offerings to a far away ministry, sometimes overseas. Nothing wrong in doing that when it is impressed in your heart by the Spirit of God. There are some exceptions, but it is not right when it is based on wrong doctrine and perceptions. After all I have said, I should make it clear that I am not discouraging preaching on giving. Giving is biblical. I am only discouraging using the wrong scriptures to boost our offering fundraising. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 10, it says, now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruit of your righteousness. According to this scripture, God does multiply seed to the sower. There is no need to force or humiliate those who have no seed to sow. God will not demand where he did not supply. There is no need to hammer people and shame people and leave them guilty after offerings until some of them end up quitting the church because of this pressure. God will supply seed to the sower. He will not demand where he has not given. Look at the second part of this verse. It says he does multiply the seed you have sown. So those who criticize the true meaning of God multiplying seed should look into this scripture. It is true that God does multiply seed and this one is referring to material seed. We can rightfully and correctly use scriptures like this to encourage people during giving. Have a lovely day and a lovely week. This is Pastor Itani Madima.